One big reason PCBs are a persistent problem is that it takes so long to clean up places like the Duwamish River, Seattle's industrial corridor. Some of Seattle's heaviest industries settled here decades ago, and today it's the region's largest hotspot for PCBs. My name is B.J. Cummings. I represent the Duwamish River Cleanup Coalition. Uh, we're a community B.J. Cummings leads tours of the river, but this isn't your typical tourist outing. It's an environmental wake-up call. EPA did an investigation here on the Duwamish River about 10 years ago and concluded that the industrial history here had left behind such a legacy of toxic pollution that the river was declared a federal Superfund site in 2001. Superfund is one of EPA's big sticks. It was the regulatory program created in 1980 to clean up America's worst pollution problems. Your typical Superfund site used to be factory, pipe, Superfund site, right at the bottom of your pipe. That's not what we have here. We have what's called a mega site. We have a five, five and a half mile stretch of river, end to end, that's being investigated for cleanup. This is one of the largest Superfund sites in the country. The river was listed as a Superfund site because of an accumulation, a legacy of toxic pollution that has built up in the mud at the bottom of the river. There's a direct link between contaminated sediments in certain areas and contamination of the food web above those sediments. In fact, one might even think of the PCBs riding an elevator up from the sediments up into plankton, up into little fish, big fish, harbor seals, killer whales, eagles, humans. The toxic buildup in the Duwamish River bottom. This is going to cost millions to clean up, maybe tens of millions. and owning 90% of that liability is not a place you want to be. So these folks who are not stupid are busy trying to prove that it's somebody other than them that it's are the source. pointing the finger That's at everybody right. else. And they are trying to prove probably that not that they have no liability because that's pretty hard to do. But proving that they have very little compared to their neighbor, that's what it's about. And it's about money. Ultimately, the issues of cleanup, time and money are tied to a larger question for all of us. That is, how clean do we expect our waterways to be? Here on the Duwamish, the state has posted warnings not to eat local fish and shellfish because of pollution. And so the fight now is over whether the river can be cleaned up enough to let the locals fish the river once again without risk. What we determined was that the most sensitive population we had out there were our Native Americans that eat the fish out of the Duwamish. And they eat a lot more fish than most of us. They do. And so that was the standard you wanted to set. Clean yes. it up so the tribes can eat the fish safely without getting poisoned from PCBs. Yes. Okay. And Boeing objected to that? Basically, they don't feel that that stretch of the river can ever be returned to where you could harvest these kind of uh, fish and shellfish. We disagree with that. I think people need to understand is that there are going to be certain uses of the Duwamish River that aren't going to be possible in the future. And I'll give you an example. I don't think people are going to be able to subsistence fish out of the, the species that are in the Duwamish. I think we have to set reasonable expectations for cleanup in industrial areas. I mean, where do you come down on that? How clean is clean? I mean, do we need to get rivers back to where people can fish and safely eat the fish without fear to their health? That's the goal. That is the goal. That has to be the goal. Because every one of those rivers and streams are going into Puget Sound, so it's not as if it's about that river or that stream alone. It's about the whole ecosystem. Just across the river from Boeing, the threat of legacy pollution and the question of how clean is clean became personal. Right here in South Park, where in 2004 the community was rocked by news that some of its streets and people's yards were contaminated with PCBs. People in South Park, particularly people with, with families with small children, got incredibly nervous. I mean, out and out scared um, about what this might mean. I push my kid's stroller down that street every day. You know, I go down there and I fish. My dog runs along that waterfront. You know, what does this mean for me? What does this mean for my health? I mean, you're trying to do the best for your kids. And 
all of a sudden something like this comes and that feels so scary what you're saying. She's talking about PCBs, cancer-causing microbes banned in the 70s, but taking an emotional toll on the residents of South Park today. The city of Seattle realized it had a crisis and moved quickly to pave the contaminated streets, clean up the polluted yards, and tell people how to take safety precautions. Suddenly, South Park, a largely immigrant working-class neighborhood surrounded by industry, was galvanized into action. Residents demanded a long-promised cleanup of an abandoned industrial site called Malarkey Asphalt. Malarkey Asphalt, for years, operated directly across the street from homes in South Park and was a really, really dirty business. For many years, there was open dumping on the riverbank. There was waste oil that was sprayed in the area to keep the dust on the unpaved streets down, and that contaminated the roads and yards um, right in people's gardens around the property. Years earlier, the old Malarkey site had been bought by the Port of Seattle, which did a PCB cleanup on part of Malarkey's property. But people in South Park suspected there were still many more undiscovered PCB hotspots upland from the riverbank at Malarkey. So the neighborhood said, go take some tests there. Tell us what's there. EPA and the port said, oh, no, no, we did the upland. It's finished. We eventually were able to succeed in getting just a few more tests. Just assure us. Show us it's okay. We were finding numbers that were higher than any of the other. Doug Hotchkiss, the port's manager for the Malarkey site, ran tests. And what he found surprised everyone. What was the hottest spot you found? How high was it? The hottest spot for PCBs was right in this area here, and it was about 9,000 parts per million. 9,000, and the federal limit is 25. I mean, this is a really hot spot. Yeah, and luckily it was under asphalt, but it was still something that even under asphalt, you couldn't just leave there. We so Hotchkiss drafted a plan to clean up malarkey, really but it backfired. We would be cleaning up to 25 parts per million, which was the cleanup level that, that EPA had accepted before. And how did the community take that? How did they react? They were, they were not happy with it. They didn't find it acceptable. In fact, South Park was up in arms, insisting on a cleanup to the residential standard of one part per million. Duwamish River Cleanup Coalition, residents from South Park, um, started calling up port commissioners and explaining the problem to them. They got in vans and buses and went down where the port commission was meeting and one after another got up and told the port commission that they were worried about their health and that the port commission had the responsibility to the community to make sure that that cleanup would be safe for the entire community to use. Well, it was a very emotionally charged meeting. I wouldn't necessarily say it was confrontational, but it was a lot of emotion in the room. And I remember a particular episode where a young mother came up to the stand and said, you know, if it's only a question of money, how can you forsake the children of South Park? And that was something that really hit home to me. So the elected port commissioners, sensitive to public opinion, backed down. They adopted the more protective residential standard at twice the cost. I think that this effort has been successful because this community has been uncompromising in speaking up for itself and in insisting that people listen. We essentially have a community here that has been on the fringes of any kind of economic or political power in the city of Seattle for many decades. So it's a community that has only recently kind of refound its voice. By finding its voice, South Park redefined the meaning of clean and the community is now at work developing riverfront habitat zones at Malarkey and elsewhere along the Duwamish. In the absence of a B.J. Cummings or somebody like her who is out there on the water, knowledgeable, aware of what's happening and poking and prodding and asking us the hard questions, we would not be making the progress that we're making.